Okay, in this video, we are going to take a look at <clears throat> what is surface area. So surface area is area of a three-dimensional shape. So what I have here are some basic school supplies that I just found around my office. I have a pack of staples, um, a pack of paper clips, um, index cards, and some markers. And surface area is where we have to calculate the area of each side of a shape and add it up to find the total area of that three-dimensional shape. So I'm going to start with the note cards and you can see that my note cards have a thin rectangle and that same rectangle is on the other side. Okay, so I like to say that there's a left side of the shape and a right side of the shape in this rectangular prism. Okay, then we see you have that we have a top and we have a bottom. Okay, and again, these two are congruent, so we have a left and a right, a top and a bottom, or we can stand it up like this and say left and right, top and bottom. And then we have the front and the back, okay? So we see this rectangle here, and then we flip it over and we have another rectangle. All right, so if I wanted to calculate the surface area of this shape, I would need to measure the sides and then calculate the area for each side and find the grand total. So I'm going to use just a regular sheet of graph paper here and I'm going to use a regular old ruler and I'm going to just use the centimeter side to, to measure this. And again, you don't need to measure. That's the nice thing about your practices is they'll give you the measurements. I'm just going to measure just so I can get real numbers here. Okay, so I'm going to round to the nearest whole centimeter, and it's just under 8. So I'm going to say that that is 8 long. And what is that? That's about 2. We're going to go with 2. We're going to keep it whole numbers just to make it easy. Okay, so if I'm looking at this rectangular prism, I'm going to call this the left and the right. Okay, so I'm going to call this the left and this the right. So in my rectangular prism, get a better marker here. I have a left and a right and I'm just gonna call it left right and I know that it's 2 by 8. Okay so 2 by 8 and again I'm gonna just kind of show you again how I got those measurements. I'm gonna call this the left and the right. Okay and I'm using the centimeter and I can see that this is eight long and about two wide, okay? All right, so we know that to find area, we're doing like the length times width or base times height. We're multiplying these two numbers together. Two times eight is 16, but I have two sides. So I'm basically doing this twice for each side. Okay, so now I know that the left and the right have been measured and we found the area. Now I'm going to do top and bottom. So I'm going to call this the top and this the bottom. Okay, now they're the same. So once I find one of them, I know the other. Now I'm going to predict that this is also two because if this was two, this is most likely two. So I'm just going to double check, but yes, it is. So this side here is going to have the same measurement as this side. See that? Okay, it's just under two, probably more like one and three quarters, but we're going to go with two. Now, how long is it across? It's a lot longer than eight. This one is looking at about 12 and three quarters, so we're going to go with 13 just to keep it nice and easy. All right, so we're going to call that the top and the bottom, and I'm going to use a different color for that. Okay, so we have the top and the bottom. Top and bottom. And we figured out that it was the same two, but it was a little bit longer. And there's two sides to that, a top and a bottom. So we have 26 and another 26. Okay, so, so far we have done the left and the right. We've done the top and the bottom. Now we're going to do the front and the back. Now the front and the back are not going to have two as the measurement because you can see it's pretty long on both sides, but this line is going to match 
maybe one of these and this side is going to match one of these. So let's check and see. I'm going to use the back because it's plain because there's lots of writing here. So I'm going to use the back. But we know that it's going to be the same as the front. Okay, here we go. Look at that. Eight. Okay, so just like our eight here that we got here on the side, this is also eight. And then we're going to go across. And look at that, just about 13, which matches this side, which because it's connected to the top. Okay, all right, so now we know that this is 8 by 13. So I'm going to use a blue for that, or purple. Actually, we'll use blue. Let's grab a blue in here. We're going to call this the front and the back. Front, back. And it's going to be 8 by 13 and there's two of them. All right, now I'm not going to use my calculator for this. I'm going to use good old fashioned multiplication because it's basic facts. So I'm just going to kind of come over here on the side and see what 18, I mean 8 times 13 is. 3 times 8 is 24. So I have my two, my 4 in my 1's place and I'm regrouping my 2 for the 10's. So it's two 10's. So I have 8 times 1 10 which is 80 plus 2 more. So that would be 100. Okay. So we know that this is going to be 104, and it's duplicated. All right, so I have now calculated my all six sides of my shape. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so it's a prism, rectangular prism. I've done the left and the right. I've done the top and the bottom, and I've done the front and the back. Now, I've found the area for each one of these sides. All I have to do now is the final step and add them all up to get the grand total. Now, you can use a calculator for this or you can chunk it, which I highly recommend. So I know that 16 plus 16 is 32. Now I happen to have that memorized, but if you don't have it memorized, six plus six is 12, regroup, and then three tenths. <clears throat> okay, 26 plus 26, I happen to know, is 52. But if you don't know that, 6 plus 6 is 12. Regroup again here, 2 plus 2 is 4, 2 tens, um, two, 20 plus 20, plus the extra would be 5, 52. Okay, last but not least, this one is pretty easy. This is going to be 208, and I can use mental math for that because there's no regrouping. 8, and then Okay. All right. So now that I have chunked my area, I have my left, my right total, my top and my bottom total, my front and my back total. Now I need to add one more time to get the grand total. So we have 32, we have 52, and 208. And I'm going to be very careful to add these up. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And my two, 292 square units. In this case, I'm using centimeters, okay? So I'm using my centimeters. That was what I used as my unit of measurement. So now I know that the total surface area, the area of all six sides of this box here, this pack of post uh, index cards, is a total of 292 square centimeters. Now. Why do, we be, why do we need to know surface area? Well, I might not ever need to know the surface area of a pack of index cards, but some ways that we use surface area is when we're trying to figure out the amount of paint we might need for a room. So like you can imagine like your, your room that you're in, and I'm just gonna do like a quick kind of little sketch here of a rectangular prism. Okay, and I'm just doing a quick sketch. All right, and let's just say we need it to paint all sides of that room. Now, on your papers, like your questions that you have for your, for your curriculum, math curriculum, it's going to be a, a three-dimensional shape drawn on a flat surface. So sometimes you might need to visualize those sides. But if you know you have to paint all, let's say, maybe not all of the walls, because maybe not painting the floor, because the floor would be like carpet or tile, but if you needed to figure out how much you need to paint, you're going to find the surface area of the left, the right, the front, the back, maybe the top, 
you might not do the bottom, right? You might only do the surface area for the sides, but that would be an example. Another example of surface area is when you have a box. Let's say if you are shipping a box and maybe it's a Christmas present or a birthday present and you need to figure out how much wrapping paper you will have. Usually wrapping paper is sold in square footage. So if you have this box here and you need to wrap it, you might need to know the surface area of the box, okay? so. Surface area is very important. Now, if I pick one of my other ones, like you can see my markers, this one has a left, a right, a top, a bottom, a front, and a back, just like my index cards. But as you can see, this is much thinner and longer, so my surface area is going to be slightly different. Maybe this might be one centimeter by maybe like, I don't know, if that was 13, this one's probably like 15 centimeters, right? So surface area is going to be different depending on the shape. Now we're just starting with prisms. We're going to be just looking at rectangular prisms here and cubes, okay, and cubes, prisms and cubes. And all rectangular prisms and cubes have six sides. They all have six sides and they will usually have a pair like a left, right, a top, bottom, a front, back. Now a cube is special because all sides are going to be the same. All sides are equal. Now I don't happen to have a cube nearby, but if you had a cube, what you would have is a box that has all equal sides. So once you find the side of one, then you just have six of them, right? So the rectangular prisms are the harder ones because you're actually finding uh, six, you know, six sides, but they come in pairs. All right, so let's try one more. We're going to try one more in this video, and then we'll move on to some practice problems. All right, for this one, I'm just going to use the staples. Okay, so we have the staple or staples here, this box of staples, and we want to figure out what the surface area is. So I know I have a left, a right, a top, a bottom, a front, and a back. Now these sides can be interchangeable, like I could stand it up and I could say this is the top, this is the bottom, this is the left, this is the right, this is the front, this is the back. It really doesn't matter, right, because it's six sides. But I do want to keep myself organized, so what I would recommend is pick a side and start and name it either left, right, or top, bottom. That's kind of what I like to do. So I'm going to say that this is the left and this is the right. And I'm going to write that left slash right. Now, the hardest part of surface area is just organizing yourself. Okay, so let's see what we got. I'm going to use my centimeter ruler. Okay, so I have one side is four centimeters by ooh, three. Okay, so this is a four by three centimeter space. So I'm just going to write 4 times 3. Now, I need to do this twice because there are two sides to this. There's the, this left and the right, okay? So if I put the box here, these are the left and the right sides. Okay, 3 times 4 is 12, 3 times 4 is 12, and then while I'm at it, I'm just going to add these two together. Why am I adding them together? Because I have two sides. So these two are just going to add together be a total of 24, okay? So we're just going to add those two together because I have two sides. So this is 24 units, and I'm using centimeters, so I can say centimeter squared. Okay, one done. One pair done. Let's do the next one. All right, I'm going to do top and bottom. So I'm going to say this is the top and this is the bottom. So if I just have my box sitting here, left, right, top and bottom. Okay, so I'm just going to rotate it around here, top, bottom. All right, let's see what we got. Now, I already know before I measure that this side here is going to match the measurement of the three that I got here, because if I roll this over, it's like the same side, right? They're connected. So it's like the seam of the box. So there's three, and then it's going to be much longer. Eleven. All right, so we've got three times eleven. And we're going to do that twice because we have two of them. So we've got this top and then the bottom. 
So that's 33, this 33, and together the total, because we're adding them together, is 66 centimeters squared. We're adding them together because we have two sides, top and bottom. All right, very last, not last but not least, we are going to do the front and the back, the front and the back. So front, back. All right, here we go. Front and back. Lay forward, front. Now, when you do this on paper, the reason why I'm color coding is because I'll show you, at, once we get into the practice problems, you can use heart markers and highlighters to help you make sure you don't forget any of the sides. Okay, so I already know that this is going to match this side of my measurement. So the four that we got up here for the left and the right, it's going to match this. All right, but let's double check. I'm all about double checking. All right, look at that. We got four and we got 11. All right, so one of each, right? I'm taking the four from this and the 11 from this because it's connected on two sides. So this is connected to the four and this is connected to the 11. So four times 11 is 44. And I have two of them, a front and a back. And then I'm going to add these two together. This is a nice easy one because the numbers are relatively easy to add. There's no regrouping. No regrouping. And I'm going to put a plus sign right here just so you can see that I added those two together. Okay, so now I've got my left and my right. I've got my top and my bottom. I've got my front and my back. Okay, individually. And now I just have to get the grand total. Now, when, then when I did this practice problem, I I added them together as I went. That was just my strategy, just to make it a little bit easier because I can take care of one pair at a time. And now I have 24 plus 66 plus 88. I'm just gonna carefully add these together. Again, you can use a calculator to double check your work if you'd like. Here's a group of 10, six plus four plus eight is 18. Regroup. Okay, I'm being strategic here. I see eight plus two, that makes a group of 10. I'm all about making 10s. Plus six is 16, plus one is 17. 178 centimeters squared. All right, so as you can see, I'm gonna find, obviously like there's, you know, different surface areas. This one's definitely a little bit smaller than this one. This one had a surface area of 178 centimeters squared. And my original one practice problem that I did had a surface area of 292, okay? So we will do some practice with this, but this is just a really good strategy. I'm gonna put this kind of here so you can see it together. Very good strategy to list out your sides, okay? Again, it's a rectangular prism. And we know when we are working with a rectangular prism, we're gonna have six sides. Oop. Six sides. And they'll come in pairs. They'll come in pairs. So two, four, six. All right.